We're in Ogden, so we're up north, but we're on the west side of Ogden. We're visiting Rooster's Brewing Company. So we first featured Rooster's on Historic 25th Street in our very premiere season. Now we're back. We're at their epic distribution and brewing facility and their tap room. We're gonna learn all about the finer nuances of a beer and also enjoy a little bit of food because why wouldn't we? We'll mask up first though, right? Katie. Jim, how oh, are yeah. you? Awesome. Welcome. So Thank you. We are excited to show you around Rooster's B Street Brewery, our latest project. Oh my gosh, this building is phenomenal. It's going to be fun to see. Okay, so we've got Steve Kirkland waiting okay. back there in the brewery. He's okay. our number one brewer, and we'll bring you back to him, and then I'll loop up with you a little bit later. Cool, we'll loop work? around later. Sounds okay. good. Thanks. Follow me. Steve, I presume. Katie, how are you? I am a so excited to be here. To We're excited like, to have you. I'm speak to the beer master, the beer maestro. How long have you been brewing for Roosters? 26 years now. 26 years. 26 years. So you really are sort of the mastermind behind this entire line. Yeah, I like to think so. We featured Roosters in our very first season of Taste Utah, and there was just the downtown store where you've got like the, I think maybe three or four of these and much smaller. That's right. So this is like a huge distribution warehouse. How big is it? How many of these vats are we doing? How many? This is a 30 barrel system here. Oh my gosh. So we can make 30 barrels at a time and these bigger fermenters can hold twice that. So 60 barrels in a big fermenter and 30 I mean, barrels in a small. So it's a, it's a big step up. It's like you're not messing around with that. I'm taking it seriously. From the very beginning of the beer making process, what are we doing? Any fermented beverage is, is basically providing yeast with something to eat and then uh, appreciating the effects that it, that it creates. So like wine, everyone knows wine is just fermented grape juice. So it's yeah. the sugar in a grape that is makes wine, right? The yeast eats it, makes alcohol and changes the flavor. Right. In beer, you're, you're fermenting the sugar from barley. Okay, barley. Barley. Okay. But uh, of course, barley isn't juicy. No. So you can't just squeeze the juice out of it and ferment it. No, you just crush it and you'd be so disappointed. Right, <laughs> you wouldn't get much out of it. So what we need to do is we need to get the sugar out of barley. Okay. And that starts with the malting company. Okay. They take a barley harvest Okay. and they, um, they germinate it. They okay. germinate it in these huge warehouses. And that begins the process of breakdown of starch to sugar. That's before the barley even gets here. That's correct. And when they get it to a certain point, then they'll, they'll arrest that process, they'll dry out the grain, and they'll bag it. Okay. And so what we get is bags of malted, what they call malted barley. And you just have these huge, huge bags They're of different 55 kinds of- They're 55 pounds. 55 pounds, that's pounds. pretty huge to me. That's like a, <laughs> it's like a middle school child. Right, uh, it is, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we'll add water and grain together in what's called the mash ton. Okay. Have a big, uh, stir in there, a big rake that stirs it. So at the end of that 45 minute resting period, you'll have two things in the mash tun. You will have the solid portion of the grain, the husks of the grain, Okay. and now a very sweet liquid called wort. So in the mash tun, the only thing that goes in there is this crushed barley yep. and water. That's correct. And hot water. When we're done, we open up those valves. The liquid is able to go beneath the screen. The wort. The wort, correct. And you've been paying attention. I'm, I'm taking mental you're, notes. You're doing a good job. This, this is my first rodeo. <laughs> it's not your first brewery, I'm sure. Um, so then we allow the wort then to flow into the kettle. Okay. And leaving all the grain behind. Okay. Now we want to make sure we get all the sugar we can out of that mash. So we, yeah. we shower it with more hot water and that leaches through, uh, pulls out the sugars and everything gets into the kettle. And we want to bring that to a boil. Okay. Boiling will concentrate the wort. We'll okay. lose some of it in, in steam. So we start with 34 barrels. We might end up with like 31. Does it make it a little more boil. potent then? It does. It rigor? concentrates. Yeah. And so that concentrates the wort. Uh, the wort uh, in the kettle is when we also add the hops. Okay. The hop is the flower or the cone of a hop vine. Okay. And provides uh, essentially two different things to beer. It gives beer bitterness. Okay. To counter the sweetness. Uh, hops also provide a fruity 
a, a aroma, a flowery aroma to a beer. Yeah. When the boil's complete then, we want to move the wort, the boiled wort, from the kettle to the next step, which is the whirlpool. Then what happens? What we'll do is we'll run it through a, what's called a heat exchanger. It's like a radiator. Yeah. After it comes out of the, the work comes out of the heat exchanger, yes. we run these sanitized lines okay. to any one of these fermenters. Uh, we add the yeast on its way in. Okay. And you see here, here's, this one's just about done, but you can see some bubbling in that bucket. Yeah. And what that is, that's, the yeast has gotten acclimated to its new environment inside the fermenter. Okay. Is greedily consuming those sugars we broke down for it in the mashing step. Okay. And is producing, among other things, carbon dioxide CO2. and alcohol. Yeah. So there's the CO2. It's a very scientific process, but just like anything with food, it's like there's this science and then there's this art. I'm curious to know a little bit more about the grain and just sort of what grain what grain looks like when it's in a, it, it's been clarified in a beer. Can we go kind of explore that? Absolutely. Okay, awesome. All right, Steve, so we have three different kinds of grains in front of us, or barley. Will you walk us through w what these are? Sure, as I uh, mentioned earlier, that the malting company will, will toast or roast the grains okay. to a certain extent to add different colors and flavors. Right. And these are reflected in the beers. So this is a Pilsner malt. Okay. This is considered pale. Because it yes. kind of looks golden it, to me. It, it, it is golden. Okay. Yes. Um, and you can have them even lighter than that. Okay. But, and then this And then this is a caramel malt. Again, uh, the way they, they, they roast it gives it kind of a caramel-like flavor. And uh, this is uh, the chocolate malt. It's nice and roasty. Uh, it gives a, a, a mocha, a coffee-like flavor mm -hmm. to a beer, um, and that's reflected in our chocolate stout. Awesome. So you have stout. This is more of a... An amber. Amber. Mm -hmm. And then this is pale. That's correct. All of this talk about liquid bread has actually made me really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to go catch Pete in the kitchen. He's the man. But Steve, this has just been so special, and I really appreciate you. You're doing just extraordinary work. Well, thank, so you. thank you. It's been my pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Chef Pete, I just visited the brewery, spent some time with Steve. That was so epic. It was so cool. Um, but I did work up an appetite. So you and I are going to sit down with Kim in a minute, but yep. you're going to make us a dish right now. I'm going to make our uh, roosters loaded nachos. Loaded nachos. Okay. Oh, I love so nachos. Okay. okay, cool. Good. You're in the right place. A little foil goes down. Yep, yep. Generous helping of, uh, of tortilla chips. Yep, homemade tortilla chips. Oh, you're making these in-house? Yep. Oh, they look... Raquel spent the whole morning make, cutting tortillas and making chips, so... She's amazing. But that's why they're good. They, yeah. The homemade chips are thicker. They can hold a lot of stuff. I'm like you know? salivating just right. over that. Yeah, yeah. Put a little bacon on them. A little bacon. Oh, I yeah. love it. And then uh, we'll put some Got chicken some on them. Chicken. We'll have beans on them. Nice. You name it. Yeah. And then a little queso. And this is uh, the secret ingredient, the pepper jack sauce. Okay. Right. Secret ingredient. And where are you getting your cheeses from, Chef? We get a lot of our cheese from Beehive Cheese. There's a really cool story behind that. We'll talk about it when we sit down. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, black beans. Love yeah, them. Beans over here. Yeah. Okay. Come back over to this side. Okay. And put some Serranos on. Oh, Serranos. A little bit of heat. A little pico. A little pico. Nice. Some peppers. Beautiful. And melt it the rest of the way. Put it up in the salamander. A little salsa and guacamole. Oh, that's uh, a beautiful salsa. Is your salsa spicy? It's it's pretty spicy. It's I mean, but survival rate has been pretty good. Pretty high. But, yeah, there's, uh, <laughs> I haven't had anybody just totally heal there. So, so. like spit yeah. fire, flame. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, I like mine. Just burn on the edges. Yeah. Not everybody does, so. Oh, oh, beautiful. Not on fire, right? And then uh, a little guacamole. Finish it with a nice, generous helping of guacamole because that's, right. that's what makes nachos delish. Okay. All right. And that's them. That's it. Right up on the line there. 
Those are the loaded nachos. Yeah. Chef, that is, I feel like I want to go dive into those. Should I go take those to the table? I'll meet up with Kim and then you'll, you're going to bring a couple of other dishes? Yeah, that's okay. what we'll do. Let's do it. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Chef. All right. Well, Kim and Pete, it's so nice to sit down with you again. So, you were literally on our very first season of Taste Utah. Yes. We featured the roosters on Historic 25th Street, and it's it's amazing to see how you've grown. I mean, going on the beer tour was awesome, and then of course Pete's food is just always the star of any always. show. So much has happened since. I mean, you've you've rebranded mm -hmm. basically. I'm very excited to talk about that too, and food and whatever yeah, you want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about the rebranding first. I'm gonna take my mask off because I'm gonna manja this you food. Love food. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have a little bit of my favorite taco, California. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get into that in a second, Pete. Okay. So, yeah. I'm, I'm actually wearing a vintage shirt here. Okay. We are 25 oh, years on 25th Street. Street. So okay. we celebrated 25 years in June of the pandemic, and we were going to close the whole street, have a big party, invite all of our neighbors and our food friends and everyone. We couldn't do that. So um, that's OK. We're still going to celebrate eventually. Absolutely. Just patience is. I think this is what we've learned this year. Patience is sometimes the most effective form of action, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make it easy. What's kind of fun about this place is we, Pete took the best of his, kind of the best of his best, right? Like he's kind of known for his sauces and just as good. The naughty sauce, right? Yeah, naughty sauce, yeah. sauce. Um, <laughs> he kind of took the, the monster. Yeah, kind of took the best of our menus <laughs> for <laughs> Rooster's yeah. Oven and Rooster's Layton and, um, and here we go. So there's some That's delicious amazing. things. Yeah, okay, well let's get into the food first. We'll talk beer in a minute. Okay. Pete, what am I eating? They taste like cheese curds. That's right. Well, yes. those are those are beehive cheese curds. Mm. And uh, of course we beer batter them and, um, and fry them. We have a big um, partnership yeah. with Beehive so. Cheese. And I love talking about that because yeah, they're sure. just celebrating yeah. their 15 year anniversary. Uh -huh. And we were their first customers, literally first customers. And they're all over the nation. They're in Canada. They're- um, They're huge. They're yeah, huge. they're huge. Yeah. And, you know, we would go and like kind of pimp cheese with them on their trips to Oregon and sell cheese. We'd like demo and then we'd go and have good food and stuff like that. So we're, they're dear friends of ours oh and our, our menus at all of our places are beehive cheese heavy. And so <laughs> you love that. You can. And the curds, like, we just don't see that many places. They are so curds bad. are the best. Mm -hmm. And like, what's better just get done skiing, get off the trails, mm -hmm. then just going and getting cheese curds. And then mm -hmm. what are the two sauces that come with them? Uh, the one is our you know, house Louisiana hot sauce that we, kind of use, like sauce. we use mm -hmm. on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, it's also one of the naughty sauces. The other sauce is the Cajun Romalade. Uh, a little spicy? Yeah, yeah. but not too not, spicy. Not hot, but yeah, like, yeah. that's the thing about Cajun food, yeah. right? It's not hot, but there's a lot of spice. Well, it's like the naughty Brussels are Being going consumed. well over there. They're called and naughty Brussels. Yeah. So. What is the naughty sauce? Gorgonzola sauce, okay. pepper jack sauce, and the Louisiana hot sauce. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Um, so that's the gorgonzola, this is the pepper jack cheese sauce, and then that's the, the okay. Louisiana hot sauce. Yeah, yeah. And you can do it the way you're doing it, yeah. which is nice. Or you could just take the sauces and go like this, right? Which is what it's some like people do, pour strip, them all over. Naughty. Yeah, right. Okay, so. yeah. <laughs> And then calamari tacos. This is my favorite. Okay. So I buzz in and out of this place a lot. I'm at all four of our places yeah. a lot. Plus but you're whenever... like a community champion. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. <laughs> for, oh yes, for Ogden here. But whenever I come out here, they know what's my usual calamari taco. Calamari. I love these. They're really good. So that's what these the are. The nachos we know. We talk nachos. We saw them in the kitchen. Right. Like so good. Well. Yep. And then I have gorgonzola bacon burger here. Um, you know, people tell me. That's the best gorgonzola burger, bacon burger they've had. You know, ours, you know, the gorgonzola, we use the gorgonzola sauce on it as well. The one gorgonzola of our best. two ways. You got the cream sauce and then the actual crumbles on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, well it's done. one of our best sellers. So, yeah. <laughs> do you offer like a vegan, vegetarian burger substitute or anything like that? We like have the, impossible burgers. Do you? Nice. Yeah. And then we, you can you can convert your various items to you know, make it impossible. So we have buttons programmed in the point of sale for that. So oh, if you want a Santa, Santa Fe salad, you want to use the impossible meat. Um, 
Well, they want us to make you a Philly cheese with the impossible meat instead of the stuff we normally use. That so. is so cool. It's a really fun space out here. Yeah, it's, it's a very community vibe. We went through a whole rebranding process when we did this big project. Mm -hmm. And we really, it was really thoughtful. It was really collaborative with our amazing team. And kind of what we came up with is, you know, we have a whole refresh of our rooster, obviously. Yep. And sort of our tagline is great bear, gritty town, good people. Oh, I love that. And that's that. kind of what we are. We're a hardworking town. We have really great people that work for us. Like, it's so much more than me and Pete. That's why we have four places and three roosters and another restaurant. You, so you just rebranded all the cans and everything? The whole, the whole everything. Yeah, the all menus, your locations. The, our whole website, our whole everything, you know? That's a, that's a big And we're kind of about partnerships, too. This yeah. is one that we're pretty excited about. So, you know, Pete and I have raised our kids on Snow Basin's Hill and Powder Mountain, but Snow Basin, we've been, whatever, 25 year season pass holders, and nice. this is their 80th anniversary. So we did this collab with them, um, and it's yeah. awesome because it means a lot to us that our family and our, and our you know, we're active, outdoor lifestyle, yeah. all that. So we didn't realize this when we, you know, staked our claim a while, like 25 years ago, that yeah. we wanted to be a community gathering space first and a restaurant second. But we luckily we got the best of both because mm -hmm. we were here kind of early when Ogden was just, six, you know, beginning very yeah. beginning to experience a renaissance, especially in the last 15 years. But it's been fun to like share our food and our beverages with music festivals and with the art center and Ogden Nature Center. Like it's just, it's a hub. It's, it's very clear, which is I think just such a gift. And it's been really hard this last year, you know, mm -hmm. like you and I talked about it last season. Yeah. When we did our Zoom. Yeah, you caught me we, yeah. like in June or something, Yeah, when right? we did our Zoom call. We were shut down at that time. Yeah, like we yeah. couldn't really even we be in the same room, room. Yeah. but we wanted to still talk food and educate people about mm -hmm. what's going on. To hold down three stores under that and be opening a fourth, especially mm -hmm. in an airport where right now travel is kind of, you know. Yeah. But. Um, how have you, how are you been lucky for yeah. Salt Lake because, you know, instead of opening that whole, every unit in that whole brand new shiny airport yeah. in September, it's kind of being phased in as the traffic is coming back and mm -hmm. now the vaccine's starting to get out and... Yeah, absolutely. So we're excited. It was yeah. kind of an opportunity that we weren't, not necessarily, but we're excited because yeah. we're going to be this warm, welcoming spot right as you enter. People are going to eat there when they are coming to Utah. And they're they're going like, to get beehive cheese curd. Mm -hmm. And they're like, where, and they're going to be like, well, where can I go get this? And just drive <laughs> up to Ogden. Because it really is. It's like a 40-minute drive from Salt Lake City. Right. It's not bad at all. And we have our place in Layton, so we do yeah. a lot out there with the airport. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. We really are like a restaurant community up here, a hospitality community. Yeah. I mean, we're the little town that could, so we work together, you know, if the Sonora Grill needs something or so-and-so needs, you know, it's yeah. just like, we really are that quote, rising tide raises all ships. I mean, because if you think about it, when Pete opened the Union Grill almost 30 years ago, Jeez. there was almost nothing, you yeah. know? And then to, and then even when Roosters opened 25, you know, 25 years ago, and then to go, what I love more than anything is to walk out from here, because these are different mountain views. We have Ben Lomond and Mount Ogden. Yeah. Um, to walk out and like look up at our mountains and just go, we live here and look what's kind of thrived around us, yeah. you know? And, it, and it, it's really cool because we have three sons and our boys are older now and they're so proud to, to be part of this and to sort of recognize what's happened as they've grown up. Yeah. When we finally said, we choose Ogden, like we choose it here, yeah. we like it here, we We didn't just end here. up here. Yeah. I think they need me in the kitchen. What she said? Um, ah! Wait, no. Um, we were talking to Sephora Bakery and they were saying how, um, I was like, why, why Ogden? and how intentional they were to choose Ogden and then to choose to open a restaurant here. Yeah, which... and they are lovely. What a gift they yeah. are to our town. People I like mean, them, yeah. right? Tona, Tona, yeah. Tony, Tony, Tona, I mean. Who yeah. we also featured in our very first season. It's so fun to see oh. like what what um, has grown, grown we're up We're going there tonight for dinner at seven. Oh, My so... youngest, we're celebrating the end of swim season. So. You're so lucky. <laughs> well, we lost Pete because yeah. he had to go into the kitchen. Because Pete, that's the longest Pete will ever be on camera yeah. anywhere. <laughs> he is, and he's a working chef. Like he's very, it. yeah. It's a working kitchen. Yeah. Um, but Kim, this has just been such an extraordinary experience <laughs> and I'm so grateful. Uh, to sit down with you and so grateful that you're part of the Utah restaurant community and really like a cornerstone for Ogden and yeah. that's really special. 
it is to, to us too. Well, so cheers. thanks so much oh, for coming up. Even though I know. All right, I'll I cheers you. Okay, there you go.